People around the world were startled this past week by news of the arrest of former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic. Martha Teisner has a story behind the headlines. You couldn't make it up. Radovan Karadzic, the fugitive former Bosnian Serb leader, picked up finally on a Belgrade city bus after evading capture for 13 years. He'd been hiding in plain sight as a health guru of all things, complete with young girlfriend, fake family, and strange hair. The bizarre preposterousness of it would be funny if it weren't for the fact that this guy is accused of masterminding the murder of more than 100,000 people, of leaving something like two million homeless during the war in Bosnia. It started in 1992. The siege of Sarajevo, old news now, but just take a look back. The massacre at Srebrenica, where Bosnian Serb troops rounded up 8,000 Muslim men and boys and shot them. And the prison camps. The emaciated appearance of the prisoners was the guard's biggest concern. Don't just photograph the skinny ones, they warned us. I was there during the summer of 1992 when the Bosnian Serbs introduced the world to the term ethnic cleansing, their ugly euphemism for purging a place of an ethnic minority by any means. In Bosnia that summer, I first met Richard Holbrook, who eventually negotiated the Dayton Peace Accords, ending the war in December 1995. I did not shake their hands. Some of my colleagues did, others did not. Holbrook recalls a negotiating session with the men the International War Crimes Tribunal named above all others as responsible for the Bosnian War. The late Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic, General Ratko Mladic, and Karadzic. I've never met anyone in my life who I felt was more evil, more awful than Radovan Karadzic. Holbrook considers him the worst of what he calls the evil three. Milosevic was a political opportunist who bankrolled the war. General Milotic was the mass murderer, the hands-on murderer of Srebrenica. Karadzic was the intellectual architect of what was called ethnic cleansing. He was a well-known, if lousy, poet and he was a psychiatrist with the New York City education, which gives a lot of prestige. But underneath all that, he was a crazed racist. I'll tell you, my army or my police have never had committed any, any rape or any crime or atrocities. Denial has always been his defense, evident in this 1995 60 Minutes interview with Mike Wallace. Your people up there did not heard men into, and women and children, into soccer fields and then take off the, the, the women and the children in buses and trucks and then march the others off to be shot? No, I, I don't uh, believe that something uh, like that happened. No mass graves? No. He'll have to explain this once he comes to trial. Many Serbs consider Radovan Karadzic a hero. In the Serbian capital, Belgrade, there were riots this past week when his arrest was announced. But in Sarajevo, on the receiving end of so much horror, there were celebrations. Karadzic may be extradited this week to The Hague, the Dutch city where the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is located. Of Holbrook's evil three, Slobodan Milosevic died in 2006 while on trial for war crimes. Karadzic is now in custody. But General Ratko Mladic is still at large. This is Mladic in Muslim Srebrenica where witnesses report that he told people gathered here in what was supposed to be a UN safe haven that no one would be harmed shortly before ordering the killing to begin. For the mothers and wives and sisters left behind, for the orphans and displaced families of Bosnia, what happens in a Dutch courtroom can't undo death, can't erase the fact of genocide. But if not justice exactly, 
It's the world's best attempt and a warning to war criminals that in time they will be made to pay.